What's up, DeFiers? Thanks for tuning in to DeFi Deluxe. It's taking me a bit longer to get this week's news up due to the holiday. Check out my new Ethereum shirt I got for Christmas. So in the meantime, I wanted to leave you with a rant, if that's okay. 2020 has been a wild ride for DeFi, and there's for sure more to come in 2021. So hear me out on this, whether you are new to the space or not. One of the most common things I hear when talking to my friends or family about crypto is, it's too bad I missed the boat. You know, I should have invested. I missed the boat with Bitcoin, or I missed the boat with Ethereum, or, you know, it's, it's too late. Everybody, I am here today to tell you, you did not miss the boat, and you are thinking about it the wrong way. First of all, let's pretend there is one big boat. Even if Bitcoin was this giant ship that steers forward everything in crypto, you still haven't missed it. We are in the early adoption phase. Sure, we're past the innovator phase, but we're in the early adoption phase, and Bitcoin could be worth $100,000 in 2025. Could be more, could be less, who knows. But one thing is for certain, it's not going to stay at $25,000 forever. Bitcoin has had huge crashes in the past. If you are new to the space, it can be hard to believe that Bitcoin has crashed to lose over 65% of its value at least three times in the past. One in 2011, another huge crash in 2013, the most famous one in 2017 prior to the crypto winner, and even another one most recently in March this year when it dipped with all the other world markets due to the pandemic down to $4,000 or so. But none of these crashes have stopped the momentum of Bitcoin. It has staying power, it's the hardest money in the world, and it's provably scarce. And now that we can use it as a base for DeFi, Ethereum can actually build on top of Bitcoin. However, that being said, as I mentioned earlier, you are thinking about it the wrong way. There isn't one giant ship led by Bitcoin. And if you've watched any of my videos so far, then you are aware that there are multiple ships and boats of various sizes launching every day. All you have to do is pick one and get on it. And when I say that, I'm not strictly just talking about speculation. Investing in your favorite projects and hoping number goes up is one thing, but that's only part of the picture. You can get involved in the digital communities surrounding these projects, and there are multiple ways to make revenue streams, whether that's content creation, governance, voting, developing tools for the ecosystem, yield farming, and putting your capital to work. There are so many ways to make money in this space. You don't even have to use volatile crypto anymore. You can just put stable coins in pools and make money. So there are other ways to make money than just investing. And I encourage you to think bigger. Think about the massive digital economies that already exist even without crypto. Okay, so take crypto out of the picture. Media, literature, education, research, writers, freelancers, graphic design, video games, streaming. These are all industries which have become increasingly digitally native in the past years. One example of a transition would be publishers moving from print to exclusively being online, for example. These are all advancements that have happened due to technology. But the technology has had one missing layer up until this point. It's been missing a money layer, a digitally native provably scarce money layer that is baked into the technology, right into the protocol. It's been missing, but now it's here. The initial absence of this money layer has allowed tech companies to become greedy behemoths, making more profit than entire governments themselves. And at the rate we're going, tech companies could become governors of the world someday. But this is where crypto comes in to help. With an openly accessible, transparent, and permissionless money layer at the bottom of new software applications, we can now have software that is owned by the people instead of these greedy tech companies. Now the world can openly collaborate and pay each other for it. Not only that, but we've seen a lot of ecosystems flourishing this year because of cash flow that goes back into the protocol's token to benefit token holders instead of board members. I believe that entirely new economies are going to start spinning up with DAOs gaining popularity this year, and I hope to see the distribution of wealth start to spread back into the hands of the people. Digital native workers like freelancers, drivers, gig economy workers will be able to earn a more robust paycheck without 20% to 50% of it going to the big tech companies. That is the future that I hope to live in. And sure, there's governance issues, there's whale accumulation issues, there's all sorts of things that we need to work on as a whole in the space. But DeFi is still in its infant stages, and the greater revolution hasn't even begun yet. So no, my friends, you have not missed the boat. Cheers. Until next time.